the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. <coughs> Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death nor life no angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any things in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this in Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. The hymn, Hark My Soul, It Is the Lord.
Kindly be seated for the reading of the scripture lesson. The lesson, the lesson is taken from the New Testament, Carlos de John. 14 verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Here in the reading, thanks be to God. We will now have a tribute. Good afternoon, church. I am Jennifer, or Jenny Bab, as Caroline will call me. I stand before you today to pay tribute to my sister, my confidant, my ride or die. Margarita Caroline Grooms, as we mourn her untimely death. To know Margarita or Caroline or Caracara according to how you are acquainted with her is to love her. She had an infectious and exuberant smile. What you see is exactly what you got once you came into contact with her. She did not pretend she was witty, candid, and was a no-nonsense person. Her mouth didn't have a filter, and she just spoke what was on her mind, whether it was accepted in a positive or negative way. However, you can be assured that two seconds later, she would say something witty to make everyone laugh, and her chastising of a few minutes ago was forgotten. She answered to all the names given to her, Margarita, which was mainly used by her school friends, from the Darrell Jordan Secondary School class of 1982. Caroline, for 
who grew up with her and all of us in the family. Care care for the family she worked with. Caroline was her middle name, so that was her name in the family and who grew up closely with her. In our neighborhood of Half Moon Fort, everyone knew her as Caroline. So if any stranger came in and asked for Margarita, they would tell you they do not know anyone by that name. If you asked for Caroline, they would not hesitate to, hesitate to point you in the right direction. Caroline was the third of seven children born to Milton and Ursula or Goli Armstrong. Caroline was always the one to take control and defend each member of the family against anyone who in any, any way set out to offend them. She was not afraid to express her feelings and let you know exactly what was on her mind. She was thoughtful, genuine, and filled with integrity. Throughout the years, she traveled a lot. She just loved traveling. About five years ago, she told me that she didn't think she wanted to travel anymore. She had done enough. She, she was a household name in Springfield, Massachusetts, where I live, with all my friends, because she became their friend, she, she, be, she became their friends as well, and she corresponded with many of them on a daily basis. Thank God for social media. She knew she was a very integral part of our family and the extended Springfield family and knew she was always welcome and surprised me with many unannounced visits. Caroline leaves to mourn her two children, Kibar and Lasanta, who she most treasured. Her lifelong partner, Phil, Philmore, Philippe, siblings, Joan, Norma, Terry, Beverly, Rosabelle, Debbie, and Omar. The Bab household, including myself, Marcella, Ronnie, my mom, Elma, and our extended family. Her many nieces, nephews, great nieces, Marlo and Sonia Mains, many cousins and extensive list of friends, especially from the class of 1982 class of Darjana School. Too numerous to mention. The Eiffel, Armstrong, Broom, Briggs, Brooms, Motley, and McDonald's family. Caroline had a very strong faith in God, and now that I have some time to reflect, she stands ready for this transition. Caroline, we will always love you. I will definitely miss you. I will forever cherish the moments we had with you. Life is a season, and this is your season. You always told me that when our number is called, we must answer with our hand in the air saying, present and make our way to the front of the line. As we reflect on some of the things you said to your sisters during your illness, um, quote, the same God that brought me here is the same one that will take me out. And quote, I know that I can rest happy because Losanta will be taken care of, end of quote. We listened and we heard you, only to realize that you were telling us farewell. To God be the glory. Sleep in peace, my sister, until we meet again. Now you can share your witty jokes with the angels. We were friends in life, and we will be friends in death. I leave with these words from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, which I find very fitting for this season of COVID we are in. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should ever overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Therefore, encourage each other 
and strengthen one another as you are doing. Thank you. To him, awake our souls, away our fears. This evening I speak in the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly be seated. Words from the third verse of the 14th chapter 
of the Gospel according to St. John. When I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. When I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. St. John's Gospel, chapter 14, and verse 3. St. John, the apostle, tells us that Jesus assembled his disciples together on the night before he was crucified in order to have a farewell dinner with them. It is referred to as the Last Supper. And during uh, that supper, Jesus had a, a discourse with his disciples. Indeed, he had uh, some things to say to them before leaving them. Because these disciples were the ones who were to carry on uh, his work after he had gone. For three years, these disciples traveled with Jesus up and down Palestine. And during that time, Jesus was preparing these men for the tasks they were to fulfill. And so he had some last words for them. And while speaking to them at this farewell dinner, the Last Supper, Jesus indicated to them that he was going away from them, that he was going to leave them. They had grown throughout those three years to love Jesus a lot. And so they knew that they were going to miss him. They were perhaps thinking what they would do after he had gone from them because they were dependent upon him. And Jesus realizing that they were sorrowful, he said to them, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And then he outlined to them that his going away from them was for their good. That he was not going to leave them all alone. That he was going to send them another, another comforter. But he also indicated to them that he will come again. For he was only going to prepare a place for them. Remember, he said to them, In my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. Yes, Jesus was going to make ready a home where his disciples were going to live with him in the sweet by and by. And I wish to say to you this evening that Jesus, in speaking to his disciples on that night, no doubt looked down through the ages, and he was speaking to you and to me as well. For believe you me, Jesus is preparing a place not only for those disciples who were at that supper with him, but he's preparing a place for you and for me. When he's finished preparing that place, he tells us that he will return. He will come again. He will come again to receive all those who believe and trust in him. So that where he is, there, there shall be also. I wish to say to you this evening that life in this world is going somewhere. And death is not the end for this life. Yes, during this life we are on a journey. 
And as Christians, we are on a journey to a better place. In this life, in this world, we will have pain and suffering and grief and death. But Jesus is getting ready a place for each and every one of us where there will be no more pain. For John the Divine in the Revelation reminds us of that. He says that there will be no more pain and no more grief, no more sorrow, no more crying and no more death. Yes, my friends, though we shall die, we shall live again. And Jesus tells us so. For he tells us, that all who believe and trust in him, though they die, yet will they live. Yes, my friends, death is not the end. For after death, says the Bible, comes a judgment. And that judgment will determine where we will spend our eternity. Yes, my friends, each and every one of us shall stand before the judgment seat of God. No one will escape being judged by the Lord. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl born into this world shall stand before God on that day we call judgment day. That is the time when we will have to tell God something about the life he has loaned to us. Yes, he has loaned this life to us. This is not our life. It is on loan to us. It belongs to God. In the day of reckoning, we will have to, tell, have to tell God something about how we live this life he has loaned to us. The question is, will you be able to tell God something about your life in this world? Will you be able, my brothers and sisters, to give a good account to God of your suretyship in this world? For what you say to God on that judgment day will determine where you will spend your eternity. And let me say that you will spend eternity one of two places. Heaven or hell. There is no in between. For the Bible tells us if you are not for God, you are against him. And so when the land's book of life is open, when that book is open and your name is called... Yes, it may say present God. Yes. But when you say present, then God would question you. And if you cannot give God a good account, if you cannot tell God something good about this life you have lived in this world, then Scripture says to us, and you shall hear the still small voice of God saying to you, Depart from me, for I know you not. Don't stop. Don't ask any questions. Don't ask for any breaks. Because you're having all the breaks you can have in this life. For if you should hear the words, Depart from me, then you know that you're locked is with the devil in the pit of hell. But if you can give a good account, then you shall hear, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your father. To hear those words, then you know that your place will be in that mansion that Jesus Christ is at present preparing for each and every one of us. And I am sure, I'm sure that I, I'm sure that everyone would want to hear the well done. I don't think anybody in here this evening want to spend their life in the pit of hell. Hell is sweet, you know. 
Helen Sweet at all. We are told that it's a place of burning fire. Hot, hot, hot. And you can't ring over our shawl and call it for an engine, you know. No for an engine in hell. And you're going to feel that pain forever and ever. You want to endure that? No. You don't have to go through that. That is why God has made provision for us. That is why he sent his only begotten son, so that we should not perish in the pit of hell, but have everlasting life of him in heaven. That is the extent of God's love for you and for me. So my brothers and sisters, I am saying to you this evening that when the trumpet sounds and Jesus Christ descends, when he comes to gather his chosen ones, the redeemed of the Lord, then you can be around them. That's where he wants you to spend your eternity. It is his desire that each and every one of us should pass through those golden gates. It is his desire that each and every one of us should be among that great multitude John the Divine speaks about, of which no man could number. It is his desire for each and every one of us to be among the saints of God when they go marching through the new Jerusalem or wash in the blood of the Lamb. That is his desire for you and for me. But is it our desire to be with him in glory everlasting? If that is our desire, then we will make the decision, not later, but now, if you have not already made it, to serve the Lord to follow where he leads, to allow him to have the first place in your life, to be at the center of your life. And my friends, yes, you can even now take a good look at yourself and ask yourself the question, am I living the type of life that will enable me to be with God in glory everlasting? And if the answer is not positive, then here and now you can make the decision. Yes, where you are sitting this evening, you can sit there and make the decision. Just open up yourself, open up your life, open up your heart, and invite the Lord Jesus Christ in. Ask him to wash you, to purge you, to cleanse you, and to make you into the man, the woman, the boy, the girl he would have you to be. Yes, there where you are right now, you can open up and your prayer can simply be, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for thee. And be genuine. Your prayer, yes, even now, where you are, can be take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. If you're not serving God, now is the time for believe you me, we are living in the end times. We are seeing all sorts of things happening around us. The biblical predictions are coming to pass. Jesus is about to put in his appearance. How will he find you? Will you be ready? Yes, Jesus is about to come to take with him those who are prepared to live in the sweet by and by. Brothers and sisters, my appeal to you this evening is to make your calling and election sure. Is to prepare yourself to meet the Lord. It is to live your life in such a way so that when the role of God is called up yonder, you will be there. And so this evening, as we give God thanks for the life of our sister Margarita, we pray that God will have mercy on her soul and grant her a place 
with all his saints in glory everlasting. And now to all her sovereign relatives and friends, I extend to you deepest sympathy. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and the grace to use the right the time that is left us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins, the evil we have done, and the good we have failed to do. And strengthen us to follow the steps of your Son in a way that leads to the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, with whom still live the space of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give your heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who having finished their course in faith now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who bereave the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, nor sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now commend our sister, our reader, to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power, you have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust, Margarita, to your merciful keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us and is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in glory everlasting. Amen. The hymn, O love that will not let me go. As you leave this holy place this evening, there are some baskets at the back of the church. If you're desirous of making your contribution to the work of God in the spark of, of his vineyard, you can do so. And may God bless you and bless whatever you have to give. O oh, love, that will not let me go.
recorded on Instagram. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this. Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins. And at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensuring certain hope of resurrection to eternal life. To our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our sister Margarita. And we commit a body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. That when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister Margarita and we ourselves, may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
the hymn Angel Voices Ever Singing. To God be the glory.
strong in the Lord. Okay, just hold on, please. It is well with my soul.
turn it out, turn the other side. The Lord be with you. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Good, good, there, good. Well, how are you, mom? Yeah, tell, tell her she's going to be 190. Oh, I went with your mother in law that old. Yeah, the boy. Tell her to say hello and I wish her happy birthday.